thanks that, I, that we have the opportunity to talk to Vishnu. Uh, let let uh, I first introduce myself and my colleague, uh, Christa Klopper. So I am uh, Fritz from Rode. Um My background, uh, uh, I'm an operations researcher, and I work in the faculty of uh, health, medicine, and life sciences as a uh, as dean, and I'm also a member of the board of the University Medical Center in Maastricht. And uh, uh, our medical center employs 6,000 uh, people, so it's quite uh, uh, sizable. And um, I am also responsible for our uh, operations in, uh, in Asia. This is my colleague, uh, Christa Knopper, yeah. and she will introduce herself. Okay, I work for the I work for Maastricht University, and I work for the executive board. So basically, the people that take all the decisions, and I give them advice on strategic partnership building with uh, countries outside Europe mainly. So that includes India, and that includes also Southeast Asia, and we also I have colleagues of mine that do, for example, uh, partnerships with Africa. And um, so that's also like the reason we're actually sort of traveling around and we're finding out to see which would be good partners for our university where there would be a win-win situation. And um, that's our aim of being here. And we like to sort of introduce a little bit about the university so you can get to know, you can know where we are actually coming from. Yeah. Um, well, this this is uh, Western Europe mainly. And uh, Maastricht is, um, is a city in the Netherlands, it's a very small city, but we're located in the very south of the Netherlands. And from there we actually have a, a good sort of reach into other countries within Western Europe, also Eastern Europe, and it's fairly easy to travel nowadays. So we find that our location is ideal. It's on the border of uh, Germany and Belgium, so there's many chances already like almost fluently to interact with other cultures because cultures in Europe can all, although they're very close together they can be very different. Seventy six we are the youngest university of the, the Netherlands and uh, we are public recognized uh, university so we get uh, public uh, uh, funding and we uh, offer uh, Accredited programs, only accredited uh, programs, that is our uh, policy, policy. And we are ranked number one for most 30 programs in, uh, in the Netherlands. So uh, there are several rank ranking systems in the Netherlands, and on all these ranking systems, we are uh, number one. A um, little bit more about the university. We are a research university in the Netherlands. You have two types of universities. You have universities for professional education and you have the more classical universities, which are the research universities. Obviously, both of uh, the aspects of teaching and research is sort of delivered at our university. Um, we have 44% foreign enrollment, so that means like non-Dutch students. We're the most foreign university in that sense within the Netherlands, but also uh, in Europe. 26% um, of our staff has a foreign nationality. And the majority, because of that, basically because we were young, we started, um, we, we realized that we had to be special. So we had to sort of focus and we also sort of decided that a lot of our programs will be taught in, in, in English. So over time, all the programs are practically taught in English, except for programs like Dutch law. Um, we have what we offer our bachelor, master's, and PhD programs. And our so what we are most well known for across the globe is uh, our teaching method, which is problem-based learning. You see also this reflected in the international orientation of our educational programs. These are all international, internationally oriented. Uh, most programs are in, uh, in English. Uh, there are some exceptions, but the, the, the strategy is to have them all in, in English. Uh, also, it is important that we prepare students for professional uh, careers. So there's a focus also on uh, soft uh, skills. Soft skills will be integrated with uh, the theory, uh, that's, that's the way to do it, we think. Uh, about research, we have thematic research, thematic uh, research uh, approach. And this, that's a quite different with most universities. 
Most universities have a discipline approach where you have, for example, the research program in biochemistry. We do not do that. We have, uh, as a research team, we have, for example, uh, chronic diseases. Uh, there's a big challenge to fight uh, chronic diseases. And if you look at chronic diseases, then you see there are fundamental problems in what we know about chronic diseases. So on the, in, in, in the, on the level of metabolism, biochemistry, but there are also organizational issues, finance uh, issues in fighting uh, chronic diseases. And what we do is we made one big program on chronic diseases. Uh, that's, that's a central theme. And the different, uh, the various disciplines have to work together to contribute in, uh, in, uh, in the research about uh, chronic diseases. That, that's of course only one example. We have also programs uh, in, uh, in cardiovascular diseases, in entrepreneurship, all following the, the same thematic uh, approach to, uh, to, uh, to research. Coming with that, there's strong cooperation with business and uh, industry, where although we are publicly funded, most of our research is uh, financed by grants and, uh, and industry. Uh, so, for example, in chronic diseases, and we know that there's quite a nutritional issue uh, causing uh, chronic diseases, and we work together with uh, several uh, international uh, uh, firms to have a common uh, R&D program to, uh, to develop new, new, new nutrition uh, to, uh, to prevent uh, chronic diseases. For example, we work together with Philips, uh, Unilever, uh, Danone, uh, to, to uh, to do it together. Yeah. Okay, the university has uh, six faculties, respective economics and business administration. In that particular faculty, there is also a business school uh, that offers a lot of executive programs for, like shorter programs for business and industry world, like in Europe. We have a Euro MBA as well. So that means that they cooperate with like six, I think six countries within Europe where where they actually would come together and every every couple of months they would meet in one of these cities. Um, the, the Faculty of Economics and Business Accreditation is uh, quite a well-known faculty in the sense that it has triple crown accreditation, which is probably well-known for people in that particular field. And uh, it means that they have an AACSB, Equus, and an AMBA accreditation, and there's not many institutions within the world that actually have that. Um, we also have, like, we're, like I was saying, we're a public university, we're a traditional university, although we don't have all programs, but we also have like an arts and social sciences faculty. We have health, medicine and life sciences, and that's my colleague is from that faculty. We also have big programs in law, so we have a law faculty, psychology and humanities and sciences. Oh, it has, oh, educational programs are uh, on bachelor, master and PhD uh, level. On the bachelor level, we have bachelors of arts and bachelors of science, uh, three years. And we have uh, master programs, uh, master of arts and master of science, uh, one year. And uh, we have a research masters, uh, MPhil, of uh, two years. And these are also integrated into a PhD uh, trajectory, uh, uh, which is taking total uh, uh, four years of PhD uh, programs. And these PhD programs are uh, there are two uh, two models. One is that you, uh, as a student, uh, try to find a supervisor in your field, and then you will be supervised on an individual uh, basis, or that you uh, uh, take a standard, more or less standard, uh, PhD trajectory with an uh, MPhil integrated uh, into this. Uh, a big part of our PhD programs are financed by, by industry. Um, like I said, like we're well known for, for our teaching methodology, which is called problem-based learning. Um, you, you will and basically, well, you will find that like throughout the Netherlands, uh, more and more universities are adopting the program, and everyone is sort of adopting it in their own way. But um, the idea is sort of very much originated in our university. And it basically means that you're starting from uh, real-life problems, uh, practices, and principles. So you're basically connecting all your teaching input to the real world. Um, 
where within that, because of that, your emphasis, your, you put an emphasis on skills and an emphasis on soft skills, which we find very important. Because obviously, um, getting a degree brings you a lot of knowledge, but it still so sort of needs to sort of put you to the next stage, and that's the stage after your degree, in which you will basically find a job, start your career.